Hi all, welcome. I'm Claire Mulman here. Our website is cwowi.eu, standing for CW, yeah, cwowi.eu, standing for Church Without Walls International. Very welcome. You can find my teachings on YouTube, on Facebook channel. And today I'm going to talk about why many Christians live a defeated life. And I don't know if that's the case with you, but I speak to, I talk to many more people and Christians, and that's what I um, observe, unfortunately. Um, in previous uh, videos, I talked about that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, what Ephesians, the first chapter says, and in Matthew 16, uh, where the Lord says that the gates of hell, meaning the leadership of hell, will not prevail against revelation from heaven. And furthermore, it says that uh, God, uh, the Lord gave us the keys of the kingdom so that whatever we declare to be unlawful or forbidden, what is already unlawful or forbidden in heaven, heaven will back us up. And when we declare something to be lawful or permitted, what is already permitted in heaven, heaven will do so. So there's a tremendous authority that we have as born again people, as Christians. But why then are so many Christians defeated? Defeated. Why are they afraid of the devil? Why do they believe his lies? Because the Bible says he is a deceiver and he's a liar from the beginning. A deceiver means that you tell something that's not completely the truth. There's some kind of truth in it, but the heart of it is not true. So how can you be deceived and when can you be deceived? You can only be deceived when you do not know the truth. Right, and that's the point that I see that many Christians do not know the truth, what the word says about them, about who they are, about who Christ is in them. And when it is not a truth that is rooted in your spirit, in your heart, you will be deceived and you will start to, uh, to listen to the lies of the devil and eventually you will even believe them. And then when someone says, no, that's not true, what you are believing, they are upset because that was what they really believed was the truth. You know, but the truth is the truth and the lie is a lie. So I even heard someone say, someone is teaching that uh, the Lord will send the believer to hell for not having the fruit of the Spirit developed in their lives. Really, and some people believe it. They think, oh no, do you know the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22? Here, I have it. It's love, it's joy, it's peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So someone is teaching if you have not all, all those kind of, all those things developed, developed in your life, you will go to hell. Really. When do you go to hell? Well, Ephesians chapter 6, let's start there. Paul talks about the armor of God and he says in, in verse 11, put on the whole armor of God, it's God's armor, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And wiles means, uh, uh, wiles, oh no, the wiles are the, the methods of the devil actually. For it says, we do not wrestle against blood or against principalities or whatever. Therefore, in verse 13, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Withstand means bravely resist uh, and standing face to face against an adversary and standing your ground. Again, in verse 14, it says, stand therefore. Stand therefore, you have to stand, you have to know who you are in Christ and what the Bible says about you. First Peter 5 verse 8 says to be sober and that means having presence of mind, you know, be self-controlled and vigilant, be awake because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking and investigating whom he may devour. And then verse 9 says resist him steadfast in the faith. What if you don't know the truth? What if you cannot, do not know how to be steadfast uh, in the faith? You will be defeated because the devil will lie to you and he will deceive you and will, you will believe it and you have nothing to withstand him with. And then when you go on to Ephesians 6 verse 14, it says against, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, the word of God is truth, and so that's the most important part of your spiritual armor, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. 
and the breastplate if you can then imagine yourself like those soldiers in the past you know they had those helmets and the breastplate the breastplate protects your vital organs so imagine what happens when you do not have a breastplate wow you are open to the devil and you probably to that to that adversary to the enemy and you probably won't last long right so what does it mean a breastplate of righteousness righteousness means that you are in right standing with god wow that he accepts you that you are accepted to him what now if you don't know that you are righteous in him that's like the not having a breastplate wow and that is very <laughs> that is very sad and very dangerous so what now if someone believes for instance i i heard it many times because a person is still sinning or because they have not developed the, the fruit of the spirit in their lives or be because they still have a crunch uh, against someone else or hatred or they don't like a person or they haven't asked forgiveness to someone and what now if that person has let's say an accident a very bad accident and he dies and then what does he go to heaven or does he go to hell or what happens to him some believe oh, wow when all, not all your sins are forgiven you will probably not enter hell uh, enter heaven but the lord will probably say when you go there you know what i have to send you back because not all your sins are forgiven there's still some some issues in your life i'm sorry a sinner does not inhabit the, uh, the, the kingdom of god is that true so what we have to answer the big question is what is your ticket to heaven what is your ticket to heaven and this might be a shock to you it is not the forgiveness of your sins okay now i see some people like what 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 no your ticket to heaven is not the forgiveness of your sins what is it your ticket to heaven is that your spirit is recreated by the holy spirit that you are born again that's what jesus said to nicodemus in john chapter 3 when he talked about uh, being born again he said you have to be born again by the holy spirit to enter the kingdom of god like in a natural when you have a baby that baby was born into your family and it became a son or daughter naturally right and the bible speaks about that we have to be born again to be part of the kingdom of the family of god makes all sense then you become a son of a daughter of god of the father legally of course what 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 is it with uh, with forgiveness of sins and the blood of jesus of course the father legally forgave everyone who ever lived or ever will live and he but because he charges their sins to christ on the cross instead of on them that's what second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 says so all the sins of the people past present and in the future are charged to christ so and he died for it he paid for it he purchased the forgiveness of everyone's sin and that presents the legal opportunity for people to become born again listen to me a legal opportunity for people to become born again i'm not saying no one uh, because it's already forgiven it's already paid for you do not have to ask forgiveness no no it's a legal part but you still have to apply it you have to um you have your own will every person has his free will to decide if they want to take advantage advantage of what was done for them the provision is there but we have to make use of the provision like for instance let's say if a good friend of us calls us and says you know tonight i have no place to stay i probably have to stay out in the cold and then we are not home but we say oh you know what that's not good for you to stay outside or to sleep in your car you know what you know where the key is it's on the, the the mat over there so you just take that key and you're welcome to enter our home and you can stay and uh, be warm what now if that that is the provision is there what now if that person decides not to do it but to stay outside is it our fault that he stays outside that he's cold no the provision was there for him we gave him the key we gave him the authority to enter our home and to stay in our home but every one person has the has his own free will to decide to take advantage of it or not well so that's good but that's a very important uh, a question to decide so the legally the forgiveness of sin is paid by christ on the cross but we have to apply it to our lives so you have to be born again that's what jesus said to be born again to go to be part of the kingdom of god to be part of his family there are two ways to become part of a family first by birth but also by adoption and we have 
uh, we both have been born into the kingdom, into the family, and we are adopted by him. That's what Romans 8, 15 and 16 says. But you have received the uh, spirit of adoption in which we cry, Abba, Father. And here in Galatians chapter 4, where was it? I had Galatians somewhere over here. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, um, Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world but when the fullness of the time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoptions as sons and because you are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts and crying out abba father ephesians first chapter talks about that too verse five and John, first chapter, verse 12, said, But as many as received him, see, there you go, you apply it. He gave them the right to become children of God, those who believe in his name and who were born of God. So the legal ticket to enter heaven is that you are born of God. You're part of his kingdom. There are two kingdoms. There are a kingdom of darkness and there's the kingdom of God. So we, have, we as, as persons, human beings, we are a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. You can liken our spirit to a passport. A passport tells you where you are from. In our passport, it lets us know that we are from the Netherlands, the kingdom of the Netherlands. Our body, you can liken our body to a visa. And a visa gives you the right to be somewhere for a certain time. But when a visa expires, you have to go back to the home country, right? When we travel, for instance, to, uh, to the States, we need a visa. And it says, for instance, we can stay there like for three months. But when a visa uh, expires, we have to go back to what's, what's mentioned in our passport. And it says we are a citizen of the kingdom of the Netherlands. So we have to go back to the Netherlands. So what do I say that your spirit tells you where you are a part of? Are you born again? Are you born into the family of God? Then you go there after you die. When your body dies, so when your visa expires, you go to the kingdom that you are a part of already. We are, as Christians, already part of the kingdom of God. When you have not decided to be born again, you are already part of the kingdom of darkness. So when you die, you automatically go to the kingdom that you are a part of now. It's not God who decides at that moment if you have done well or, uh, or you know, like um, some people believe there are two angels on your shoulder, one that counts everything that you've done very well and the other things that are not done very well and when it balances it depends on which way the balance go no it's what decides when you go to heaven is what kingdom are you from what does your passport say are you a kingdom are you a person are you born into the kingdom of god or not wow so th that's what it is about being a new creation uh, what else can I tell about you? I know that my time is up. So I started off by saying many people are defeated because they don't know the truth. And John chapter 8 verse 32 says, You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So even when you as a Christian sin, even when you miss it, even when you die and you haven't forgiven your mother or father or brother or sister or your neighbor, I don't know who, you know, that uh, is okay. That is okay. Those things that are part of the flesh, they will be burned away. That's what the Bible said. They will be gone. But your spirit belongs to one of the kingdom. If your spirit belongs to the kingdom of God, you will go there and you will have free access. So it's not the forgiveness of sin that gives you the ticket to heaven, but it's the recreation of your spirit that is part of the kingdom of God so you could enter the kingdom of God. Well, that gave you a lot of food for thought, right? But go back to the scriptures and see it for yourself and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.